Hello, sweet peeps. How are you guys doing today? Today I have an advanced English vocabulary masterclass for you guys. And by the end of this masterclass, you're going to have all the vocabularies that you need to express your ideas fluently and confidently. Welcome back to Junto com o Nativo. I'm Sam. And his daddy. Hi, daddy. How are you? Hi. Hi, Saw. I'm doing great. And thanks for having me again. Um, I hope all out there is doing well. It's good to see you all back. And so I'm excited to get this class going and learn with y'all. So thanks again, Saw, for having me back. Oh, I really appreciate to be with you and uh, uh, with all our followers that uh, it, that is the reason we be here, yes? Yes, right? for sure. Okay, so uh, let's get started. We're going to start this masterclass with phrasal verbs mm -hmm. because native mm -hmm. speakers love phrasal verbs. So knowing them, it will help you sound more fluent, natural, and it will help you to understand better uh, native speakers. So in this section, let's continue and you'll learn another group of verbs. In the end, you have a quiz and then you move on and learn another group of phrasal verbs in the next class. So let's start in the group four, number one. To take up time, or just take, to take up, to take up time, to take up space, to take up, um, yeah, occupy, fill, whatever. But to take up time, um, wasting time. Well, today, I'm going to take up some of your time trying to teach you some phrasal verbs. So those old shoes are taking up space. We need to get rid of them. Too many. So let's go with that. We'll uh, let you go a little bit saw and I will, I could probably think of some more. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, good, good what do you add? So this number one to take up, this means to occupy or to fill. Now we use this specifically with two different nouns. You can take up time and you can take up space. And they're both very commonly used. For example, I could say this meeting took up my whole morning so it occupied or filled the amount of time now we can also use this uh space for example i need a new couch because my couch takes up too much space mm -hmm. so it occupied or fills space so remember, you can use this with both time and space, and they're both are very common used. Yes? Could you read again, Daddy? Yes, and I have something else to just throw in a wrench in this whole situation. So to take up, to take up time or to take up space, or you can also use it as to take up a new hobby basically using it to take up something else in your life. So that would still be taking up space in your life well, good. or taking up time in your life. So to Great. take up a new hobby or take up a new job, you can use that as well. Um, yeah. But oh, that, amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Time and space. So the next. 
to branch out, to branch out like a tree, to branch out to expand your horizons. So my business is growing. We are branching out. We're going to put businesses in of different locations uh, across the state um, to branch out our family. Um, our family tree is branching out. We are growing. So it's wonderful to have this big family that we are branching out with. Oh, yeah. great. Yes. Okay, great. Huh? Yes. Uh this number two to, to branch out. Uh, now this means to expand, as Hideri says. We use this specifically in a business context. So let's say you're in a meeting and you're discussing how to increase your profit. You might suggest branching out into new markets. So if you only sell in North, North America, you can branch out, expand, and sell in Europe or in Asia, Africa, for example. We need to branch out into new markets. Could you read again? Yes, so to branch out, to expand, to broaden your horizons um yeah to branch out our business is growing so we're branching out that's next yeah to jot down to write down so will you jot this down i got a number that i need to say out and i don't have a pen so please um before you forget, go and jot it down on that piece of paper over there. Um, jot down your Hancock, which jot down your signature so we can make copies. Um, yeah, I like to jot down. Go ahead, Saw, take over. Good. Yes, this number read this is a funny one to jot down now you would probably understand this from context in the meeting i i jotted down a new notes i jotted down a few notes so it's the exactly same time as write down i wrote down a few notes but it's very commonly used so someone might ask you maybe a boss or a colleague even might say hey can you jot this down and then they might give you a number or a date or a location and you write it down now of course not many people use it, pen and paper anymore <laughs> right uh, yes we take electronic notes so if you your colleague asks to you jot something down you can take out your phone and make a note in your phone jot it down in your phone write it down in your phone so this is uh, applies even though it, it, we even though we don't use uh, paper and pen not much. Can you read to us? To jot down. Jot this down. Take a little note. <laughs> so yes, to jot down, to write down, or make note. Good one. Let's move on. Okay. To carry out, to perform, or to conduct. To carry out a uh, 
periodic project to to complete also to carry out um shoot i didn't do my studies to carry out go ahead saw i gotta think about that one for a second okay that is the number four so to carry out um this means to perform or to conduct conduct and we use this specifically in a business context for example next week we're carrying out our customer service our student service we're carrying out our service we are conducting them we are performing them so i'm just going to do the survey that's the simply way to say uh, in the next week we're doing the service we are carrying out the service number carry out a task to carry out the task Yeah, so jot it down. <laughs> yes. What? We already did that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that one. This is an important one. So make sure you jot it down. Exactly. Number five. Good one. To keep up with the, to keep up with the task, to keep up with, to keep up with the Kardashians. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> to keep up with somebody when they're walking down the street. Just kidding. To make sufficient progress. Um, <laughs> I'm keeping up with. The times as they change because if not i'll be left behind what did the tomatoes say to the their the baby tomato say to the the mama tomato squish mm. gotcha just kidding <laughs> go ahead so okay yes that's number five to keep up with something this means to make sufficient progress on let's say that you have these many orders and your job to fulfill those orders if you fulfill this many you've kept up with the orders you've made sufficient progress but if you fulfill this many or or this many uh, anything less like this many and uh, the total of orders then you haven't kept up with the orders you haven't made a sufficient progress on now of course you can use this with many things other than orders, you can use it with your studies, your re reading list, your chores, your performance reports, your filing, your scheduling. You can use it with many, many, many other tasks. Could you read? Yes. I... We need to keep up with our tasks because we don't want to fall behind. It is always hard to catch back up once we're behind. So let's keep up and move on. Move forward. To yes. fill out, to fill out a form, to complete a form, or to fill out your clothing, to fill out your you could say to fill out your daddy's shoes or your mother's shoes, your father's yeah. shoes. 
Yeah, they're basically just you're you're taking over their their position in a business or or uh, house. You're filling out, but that's but to fill out a form to complete your information in the form. Okay, go ahead, Saw. Take your away. Yes, great. This number six to fill out or to fill in a form. Now this is when that confuses a lot of students and they ask me, do I fill out a form? Do I fill in the form? What's the difference? The reality is there is no difference specifically. When you're talking about a form, now when you have to fill out an application, you could also fill in an application. Fill out your passport renewal. You can fill in your passport renewal. In this specific context, there's no difference. Yes and no. Uh, could you read for uh, the number seven? Yes. To fill out, to fill out a form or to fill in a form or fill it out someone's shoes to complete a task, to fill out, no, not task, to fill out or uh -huh. to fill Okay. Good. Yes, good to add something else to better understand because students are really confused about that. Yes. But like, not no more. <laughs> okay. This one, yes. To drop in. To drop in to visit or to drop in and say hi to a friend or a family. So, hey, will you drop in and check in on my, my dog, um, make sure she's okay? Or, hey, will you drop in and check in on my mother-in-law because she, she had a surgery not too long ago and I would like to make sure she's okay. To drop in, um, to eavesdrop, oh no, to drop in to visit or to Simply just say hi. Yeah. Go. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, uh -huh. Good. Yes. This number seven to drop in. Adding something else. Huh? This is a great phrasal verb because you can use it both in a business context or a social context. Now to drop in simply means to visit. So. If you're talking up with a friend and you're planning to visit that friend, you can say, how about I drop in on Saturday morning? How about I visit Saturday morning? Now, in a business context, you might have a client uh, wants to drop in that wants to visit, or you might drop in on a client just to say hello as that is told and keep that relationship going. And you can use this in both a social and a business context. Very good. So I could add and don't get the drop in and drop out that they're not even close to being um, in the same category. So if you hear drop out to drop out would be like to drop out of school, to drop out of a race, to drop out of competition or a some kind of competitive deal. Or you oh, good. drop out. So it's not, if you hear those, they are not at all connected. Being drop in or drop out. Oh, I got it. Yes. So to drop in, to visit. To say hello, mm -hmm. to check up. Oh. Perfect. 
Okay, go next. To push okay. back. To push back and invent to push back or to postpone or delay or to push back someone because they're in your way. <laughs> to push back because they're pushing you. Oh, uh -huh. You can use it in different ways, but yes, to push back time. Um, um, I had to push back the meeting because we had a delay in our, um, our company or our, uh, in our paperwork. We yes. had to delay our, our, a, uh, meeting. So yes. Go ahead, Sal. Great. Yes, amazing. Yes, this number eight to push back. This means to delay or postpone in the context of a scheduled event. So a scheduled event like a meeting. Let's say the meeting was scheduled for Monday, but everybody is really, really busy on Monday. Well, then push the meeting back until Wednesday. Postpone it until Wednesday. Now you can use this in a social context. So you might be planning your wedding anniversary and it's your 10th year wedding anniversary and the actual date is March 30th. But everybody is busy, so you push it back until the middle of April. So more people can attend. Well, everyone's busy. So let's push back the party until next week, until two weeks from now. So you can push back a scheduled event, which means to delay or postpone. The next one, Daddy. To push back, but okay. So to call off or to call off something as like an event or to cancel. Yeah. Hey, I gotta call this off today because I'm not feeling well. That would be, I'm calling yeah. in sick, but I'm calling off the party because I'm not feeling well. So it's being canceled. Um, I'm calling off the meeting. Not everybody can show, so it's canceled. Go ahead, Sal. Yes, that's great. Really good examples to call off. That is the number nine, yes, to call off. Mm -hmm. And now this means to cancel a scheduled event. So remember, in the last one, to push back, you delay or postpone, but the other alternative is simply to cancel it. But generally, when you call something off, it's because there were some problems or issues associated with it. But the problem and issue could be a scheduling conflict and just people couldn't attend. So let's say you're planning a conference for the summer, but nobody uh, could be because everyone were really busy in the summer. So you might discuss it with your team and say, let's call off the conference. Attendance is too low. So let's call it off. Let's cancel it now. You can also 
use this in a social context. You might call off your wedding, but you you cancel your wedding. The most likely there was a problem, an issue, a big one, right? So in that context, in a social event, most people will wonder what happened? Why did they call off their wedding? Why did they uh, call off their anniversary? They're going to assume that something is wrong. And then the next one, but could you read those examples that you prefer? Yes, we move on to, call to, off. to go off or to cancel. Yes, let's call off the conference because the the attendance is too low. Too many people called in today. So let's call off the conference, the meeting. Did you hear they called off their wedding? Don't know why, but they did. It's got to be something serious. Go ahead. Let's see the next one. Okay. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> the next to sort out well they're gonna go with the other one um to sort out or to organize or to fix so they the wedding's back on because they sorted it out so supposedly the wedding just moved one day past because they fixed the problem they sorted it out to sort out to fix the issue. I have to sort this out. It's a mess. Go ahead, Saw. Oh, amazing, yes. Um, good explanation. So at the, that one, it's the number 10, to sort out. This means to organize, to fix if there's a problem. For example, I need to sort out my travel plans. So it could mean I just need to organize them. So I need to decide when I'm going to travel, what airline I'm going to use, what hotel I'm going to use. I need to sort out my travel plans but i also can use it if there's some sort of problem and i need to fix it for example my flight was cancelled so i need to sort off my travel plans i need to fix these problems with my plans so to sort out something out you can organize it or you can fix it very good, very if good. there's a problem yes <laughs> yeah. so then can yeah. you read for us this example to sort out to sort out or to organize to fix the issues that has occurred yes yes Go ahead, let's get this quiz on its balls. Okay. Yeah, so then, are you ready for your next quiz? So here are the questions, hit pause and complete the quiz now. So here are the answers. So now let's review your final group of phrasal verbs in the next class. And don't forget to subscribe in our channel. Yes, yes, daddy. Yes, for sure. It is great to have all you back. And I hope you guys had a good time um, learning some English. The phrasal verbs are pretty fun and exciting to learn. So 
Hope to see you guys back soon. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys back soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Kisses.